Hey guys, Rob Cini here from Golf Tech Singapore. Today's video, we are going to discuss the differences between your practice swing and your real swing. This is an interesting topic and one that I get a lot of questions on. People asking, why does my practice swing feel so good? Why does my real swing never feel like my practice swing? We're going to dive into some, my, some of my thoughts on that and also give you a couple of ideas about how you can use your practice swing as effectively as possible to help you play your best golf. So as I said, oftentimes players will notice how their practice swings that they make in the bay during a lesson or even on the golf course seem to be relatively free flowing and effortless. Uh, and then when they step in to hit the ball, they'll notice that things don't feel quite so smooth. Oftentimes ending up with swings that are out of balance and, and feel poor, but have poor tempo. And, and things that feel very, very different between practice swings and real swings. And the things I've observed over my many years of doing this is there's a couple of very key reasons for that. The first one to consider is when you're making a practice swing, there's no need to have any particular control of the club face because you're not making contact with the ball. So you're not making contact with anything. So you can swing this thing around in space quite freely with no care at all for where that club face is pointing. Obviously when you hit a shot, you need to have that club face under some sort of control in order to hit a functional golf shot, one that finishes somewhere near your target. So I see a lot of people practicing, this is a real kind of key one, a very common one, trying to really improve their downswing. Yeah, they're working on trying to hold more lag, they're talking about maybe getting the club shallowing or getting it in the slot. And on the video, they look at themselves and they're like, yeah, I can do it in my practice swing. And they've got no idea when they're swinging down towards the ball that this club face is probably about 30 to 40 degrees open, um, which is completely non-functional. So they're, they're practicing away, doing all these moves, trying to change their swing with a club face that just would not be functional. So step into the ball, try to recreate that same feeling in the downswing but your brain knows at some level that that's just not gonna work. And so at last minute, it starts to throw the club across the ball to salvage the shot and hopefully hit something functional, but most of the time you end up with a miss hit. So that's one of the biggest reasons you struggle to transfer your practice swing to your full swing is because in your practice swing, you don't have to worry about your club face. The second thing I've observed in many years of doing this is that people make practice swings where their club either hits the ground in a completely wrong place, so nowhere near where the ball is, or they make practice swings where they swing uh, thin air. They don't even hit the ground. Um, so it's not really a practice swing. It's not really rehearsing what you're about to do. If you were to make practice swings and have your club strike the ground in the wrong place, you're effectively rehearsing the wrong thing, which isn't much use at all. So when I watch someone who makes these, these lovely sort of smooth practice swings, but the club isn't getting anywhere near the ground, I know that that's not really going to help them at all. They're not really going to be able to transfer that. There may be some carryover there in terms of uh, feeling of uh, tempo and rhythm, which is perfectly uh, feasible, and I'm okay with that. If someone just wants to swing the weight of the club in thin air, you know, through the air like this to create some sort of as I say, rhythm, just give them a bit of a sense of the weight of the club and, and getting relaxed, that's fine. But that isn't really going to transfer directly into your full swing. So second thing I would, would observe is practice swings don't really ever hit the ground in the same way or the same place that a full swing needs to. And then the final reason I think that practice swings and real swings are different is because there's a huge difference in the intensity with which you swing. Um, you don't often see anybody making a practice swing that is at the same speed and the same effort that even comes close to the same speed and the same effort you put into hitting the ball. So when you change the intensity with which you swing, you also then are changing the amount of force you're pulling through that club, the way that you're moving your body, the force that you're pushing through the ground. So the two should never be considered to be similar just for that reason alone. Unless you're very, one of the very rare people who 
does treat their practice swing with the same speed and intensity as a full swing, then you can't really expect your practice swing and your real swing to be the same. They're two very, very different entities. So to give that some consideration, if you've never thought about why your practice swing and real swing aren't quite the same, there's some reasons there, I think, that validate why those two things are often very different. But let's finish today's video by giving you some useful information and drills or tips in terms of how you can take your practice swing and give yourself the best chance of hitting a good shot and, and using your practice swing in the best way possible. I've talked about this before in other videos. I particularly talk about it in short game videos and also the recent videos I did where we had the sloping lies with the uphill and the downhill and the ball above feet, the ball below feet. And what I talk about often is using your practice swing to put the bottom of the swing, i.e. the contact point with the club and the ground, to put that in the right place, meaning it happens just at or just after the ball for these fairway shots. You want to see the club head strike the ground in the right place before you hit your shot. Now you don't have to make a completely full swing in order to do that, you can if you want to, but I'll find myself quite often on the course, once I've chosen my club, decided I'm going to hit, I will just make a couple of small swings like this, where I'm just getting a sense of the weight and length of the club, obviously I'm changing club every single time I hit a shot, so it's nice to just get a sense of the weight and the length of the club I'm about to hit, and then every time I swing I'm looking and striking the ground in exactly the right place and as I say the right place is just at or just after the ball so I'm getting good feedback in terms of ground contact and in terms of the location of that ground contact conversely watching lots of you on the course you're making practice swings where your club maybe doesn't hit the ground at all and then the next one smashes into the ground this far behind the ball and that's number one it's not really providing you with much of a, a confidence in terms of the shot that you're about to hit but it's also uh, I think shows how the location of the bottom of your swing it needs some work so there's a technical deficiency there which you could talk to your coach about and really try to work on that skill of putting the bottom of the swing in the right place is, is a massive one that I've talked about on many occasions. So you can use your practice swing when you're on the golf course. You can actually stand to the side of the ball here. You can swing the club, try to make contact with the ground, and pay attention to where that club is hitting the ground. If you get good at that, you've got much more chance of stepping in and reproducing that same quality of strike when you go ahead and hit the shot. Give that a try, have a think about how you could take your practice swing right now and make it more beneficial and transfer some of what you're trying to do in your practice swing into your actual swing. And, and do let me know in the comments how you've maybe tried to do that yourself. What, have you, what skills or what tricks or tactics have you learned to try and transfer the quality of what you do in your practice swing into your real swing? Do you have any particular way that you do it? I'd be really interested to hear that and I know that others reading the comments would like to learn from you too. Guys, thanks for watching today's video. I hope you found it useful. Slightly different topic, but one that I do get asked about. It's something that does come up in conversation and I thought it would be interested one for us to talk about. I do want to hear from you. Do let me know your thoughts on the differences between practice swings and real swings. Do you even bother having a practice swing? I know a lot of people have found that the idea of taking practice swings is physically demanding and if they start hitting the ground in the wrong place, they actually lose confidence over the shot that they're about to step in and hit. So maybe you've abandoned practice swings altogether and it's come at the overall benefit of your entire game. Do get down in those comments and do let me know what you think about practice swings versus real swings. Thanks for continuing to support the channel guys. If you did enjoy today's video, go ahead and click that thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe and click that bell so you get notified of future videos. There'll be more to come. We'll be back next week. Until then, have a great week, and I'll see you all again very soon.